Welcome, everybody. I hope you can hear me well and can also see the first slide of today's webinar. Uh, my name is Fabian. I work for Adjust on the marketing team and have the pleasure today to host this webinar for you. Uh, today, the topic uh, is best practice audience segmentation for app retargeting. And we're going to look at some examples and use cases for early stage as well as late stage. As you know, the webinars that we do, we do uh, on a monthly basis, one for the European market, which is this one, and one for the US market, together with values, valued partners of ours. Today, we have invited Remerge, um, a long-standing, long-time partner of ours. And uh, with us today is Dr. Christian Liesegang. And from the Adjust side, we have Jonas Wedemeyer. Uh, Christian is uh, Remerge's SVP of operations, and Jonas here at Adjust uh, does technical account management for many of our European and especially DACH clients. Um, before we get started today, I just kind of wanted to take a quick look at today's agenda. So what we have in store for you today is first we wanted to talk briefly about why segmentation is necessary and important and some of the benefits you can reap from segmenting your user base. Uh, then some practical use cases, looking at your own data, what could you basically target by and what are um, uh, yeah, segments that are of high value. Then we're going to walk you through the Audience Builder, which is a new Adjust product that we've uh, recently launched and uh, that has been found uh, very, very quick adoption. So we wanted to walk you through it a little bit. And uh, we also have some first case studies from the Audience Builder that we're eager to share. And then, uh, of course, Remerge uh, has some case studies of their own, and they are also going to share some best practices around optimizing retargeting campaigns. Um, as always, Q&A will happen at the end. Uh, just a few words on housekeeping. Um, of course, we'll record the webinar. Um, yeah, I get that question all the time, so I think I, I mentioned it here. Um, you will also receive the slides and the recording via email, so you don't have to scribble down notes. If you want to, feel free but uh, no need to. Uh, also, yeah, a, a quick call out to you guys there on the line. Let's make this interactive. So if you have any questions about uh, Remerge's part or Jonas's part for the adjust side, please pop in your questions in this question panel that you see on the right hand side. Um, we'll make sure to answer all those questions if we have the time at the very end. And uh, if you could be so kind, please also specify who this question is for. So if you want to ask Christian a, a question about his part, just type in Remerge and then the question. And the same goes for Jonas. Just type in Adjust and then the question. Then it's a lot easier for us to know who to ask because obviously we want to get the answer from the expert. And um, yeah, that was uh, all about the agenda and housekeeping. Just a few words on Adjust uh, for those of you out there that haven't worked with us. Uh, so Adjust is a leading mobile measurement platform. Uh, we were founded in Berlin uh, about five years ago. And what Adjust helps you to do is basically answer three key questions about your mobile marketing. So the first one would be, where do my users come from? So you're probably running a, a number of campaigns with a number of partners. And we help you find out what is the ROI on your mobile marketing for specific, specific campaigns, for specific creatives, for specific partners. So you really know uh, where you get your installs from and uh, which campaigns are not working. The second thing that we help you answer is uh, what your users actually do inside of the app. So today we're really going to talk about um, in-app events a lot, how to monitor, monitor them, which ones you should set up, and we really give you real-time insights into the user behavior. And the third and last part, which is also very applicable to today's webinar, would be how to keep your users engaged. As we know, not all users are created equal. So we want to help you build audiences and then dynamically target and retarget those users that are of high value to you and your business. That's basically all we had to share from the adjust side. And with that being said, I actually want to pass on uh, the control to Jonas, who's going to walk you through the adjust part, and we'll start off with segmentation. <clears throat> yeah, hello everybody from my side, Jonas here. Thanks Fabian for the intro. Um, I'm as Fabian said, a technical account manager with Adjust, and I have the pleasure to walk you through the first part 
of our webinar today. So let's kick right off and I would like to start with why segmentation is a crucial factor and beneficial when it comes to your campaign efforts. Actually up to 94% of marketeers have seen an increase of various key metrics by employing personalization. Personalization can be achieved by user segmentation, which is technically not an engagement tool itself, but it does has a big influence on, uh, when, on personalization when combined with those. By segmenting your existing users and understanding their underlying behavioral patterns, you're actually able to reach them just in the right moment. Which brings me to the general benefits of segmentation. Not only are you able to improve your customer relationship, but you're also able to increase your conversion rates and create tailored marketing programs in order to meet the needs of variance audiences. You can also reduce server costs on both ends for clients and networks since there is a lesser amount of callbacks involved in order to push user data back and forth, which is then used for segmentational efforts. Here at Adjust, when it comes to user segmentation, we generally identify four broad scenarios that are linked to it when setting up your campaigns. First, there's a scenario of a cross-promo campaign. Maybe you're a company that has a vast app portfolio and you just launched a new app. And for this app, you would actually to drive high value users into installing those apps. So what you could do is to segment your existing user base, your existing app portfolio for those users, and then start a campaign in order to make those users also install the new app. Another scenario might be retargeting. You want to drive users back into your app in order to fulfill a certain action that they may be left off, um, which you can see here in the example with an e-commerce app where a user is being targeted in order to purchase a product at the end. Then another scenario would be push campaigns. With segmentation, you are actually able to engage with your customers and users more directly via personalized messages. And lastly, there is the lookalike scenario. So maybe you're uh, heavy on user acquisition and you already have high valuable or premium users within your app. You could segment for those and then leverage, for example, Facebook or Twitter in order to create a lookalike audience and target those users to install your app and then um, and to take certain measures in it. With that said, if we take a closer look into those general use cases I just mentioned, we can derive more specific ones, for which segmentation actually can be extremely useful when taking the user's behavior into account. So in the following section, I would like to go through such scenarios and show you in depth what you could segment by. The first use case might be to create an exclusion list. So if you're focusing, for example, heavily on user acquisition campaigns, you have a vast app portfolio, you may be a um, gaming company, and you already have a portfolio of very active users, you could create yourself a list of all of your existing users, and then while setting up your campaign, explain to the partner or the network that you're running this campaign with to not target those existing users in order to benefit for example, in user acquisition cost. Another segment that you could come up with might be dormant VIP users. Those are users that are actually um, have been opening your app within the recent amount of time, but and also spend um, relatively high revenue with you. For example, you're an e-commerce app and you sell stuff. You could just convert those dormant users that have not been active by creating a segment as well and then target them in a re-engagement campaign or push notification. Then a fairly similar case or a more specific approach, approach could be to reactivate users who had once an intention to purchase. For this, you would segment users that fulfill the criteria of having started a, uh, a payment or a checkout but did never finish it, viewed an item or added, a card, added an item to cart but never purchased as well. In a re-engagement campaign, those users would provide the, uh, would be valuable in order to get them back into the app and then finish those steps where they left off. off. Then another segment could be the inactive users. Those are users who do not have a high retention rate, namely inactive users, and you could create yourself a segment here which features those users who installed the app a while ago uh, did not react to remarketing efforts such as push notifications so far 
they do not have a high session count and they maybe never did finish a certain in-app event, here it is registration within your app. And then start a re-engagement campaign as well in order to drive the users back into the app and move them down the funnel. And then the last use case that I would like you to present here is if you're a company that runs more frequently uh, promo campaigns, you could actually increase the audience that you're targeting by segmenting for those users that actually used a voucher or a promo code in the past. In order to empower all of our customers for creating those segments rather easily, we have introduced the Audience Builder. The Audience Builder is a standalone database which enables our clients to segment their own data that they're tracking with Adjust and use those created segments for enriching their campaign efforts. The Audience Builder gives you direct access to internal CRM functionality within the Adjust platform functionality that previously required specialized tools or specific technological knowledge such as the ability to author database queries. This audience builder has been released quite frequently and is currently on trial until the end of September. So I'm gonna show you now how to use it so that you can use it up in the next couple of days until the trial ends. For this section, I'm going to introduce you and focus more on the audience builder itself. I will show you how to use it with an example on how this new product of us works by creating an audience of dormant VIP users. So the first question that I would like to answer is, how do I actually get to the audience builder? You get to the audience builder by browsing to the upper left side of your apps overview and click on the menu and then select the audience builder and the sub menu presented to you. As a next step, what you see then is basically if you never created a segment before, it's an introduction screen and you would hit then the button create an audience, which opens up another menu so that you can start segmenting on your adjust data. First, what you're gonna do is to give the segment a name. So I named it here dormant VIP users. As a next step, I have to select the store. Here I choose iTunes. Then as a next step, I would need to decide which ID type I would like to segment by. We currently offer two options. One is the advertising ID, and one is, uh, the other one are push tokens. Here I chose the advertising ID in order to segment by it for coming up with a remarketing campaign with the partners. If I would um, segment for push tokens instead, I could use the list I created later on in order to upload it to my push token uh, push services provider and then start a push notification campaign. After you've done that, you would first need to create yourself um, a list of the apps which you would like to target. Here I would select instead of all apps, the adjust demo app, and then start with additional conditions. Now, as you select other conditions, you get various options in order to segment your audience further. Those are the trackers, the events that you track with us, the countries, device types, the install time, the last session time, attributions, revenue events, and total time spent, and many more. In order to create the dormant VIP users, what I'm doing now is to select first the install time. Here I'm selecting all the users that installed within the last four months. As a next step, I would then choose the last session, which is here selected to be uh, 15 days and more ago. So those users have not come up back to my app quite uh, frequently. The next step that I'm also doing then is to select the revenue events. I would like to target VIPs, so I'm saying here that those users that are already segmented by have more than five revenue events triggered within my app. Now that I'm happy with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review currently uh, my, my conditions, see if they are correct, and if I'm happy, I'm actually clicking next and being forwarded to the next screen, which shows us the grouping feature. With the grouping feature, you're actually able to group up your already exist, uh, already sliced segment into further groups, so you're gonna break them down. Um, for example, if you would like to target this segment by a different partners, let's say by a remerge or by a Facebook or in different intervals, you could group it up to 10 groups and then also select the percentage. What's important to note here as well is that all those groups that you created within the segment are mutually exclusive. So a user would never appear within group one and group two, 
but would stay at root itself. If I'm happy with that as well, I'm going to click Create, and I'm being presented with a final screen, which gives me, first of all, an overview of the criteria that I segmented by, and then most importantly, two links, which are linked to the group. Now, whenever those links are activated, a CSV file is generated, which contains, in this case, the advertising IDs. Uh, you could then send this list to your partner or upload it to Facebook or Google in order to start your remarketing efforts. But what you could also do is uh, to crawl it in a more frequent uh, interval to ensure that this uh, audience segment is always reflecting the criteria that you've listed below. So what I really would like to point out here that whenever you crawl this URL, the list is updated in accordance to the conditions that you selected, giving you the ability to actually retarget um, with the most act, um, sorry, with the most recent set of conditions that you actually chosen for your audience. For finalizing this first part of uh, our webinar, I would actually like to run through quickly uh, to a case study with, which we did with Fantastic together. So who's Fantastic? Founded in 2009, Rantastic has rapidly grown into an innovative portfolio of apps, products, and services that track and manage health and fitness data to motivate individuals to get in shape, stay healthy, and improve their overall fitness. So now when we launched the audience builder, we went into contact with Fantastic and asked them if they would like to do a case study with us. And for this case study, um, we agreed that we would like to target users via Facebook's custom audiences that have been active within Rantastic's app portfolio. So important to note here is that Rantastic has a vast app portfolio, which can be uh, differentiated into satellite and core apps. Satellite apps focus on a more specific part of your body, whereas the core app, for example, the Rantastic results app, which we uh, featured here in this case study, is in order to improve your overall health. So it focuses different parts and gives you more or less workouts for your whole body. <clears throat> so before we started um, running these campaigns, we actually set ourselves the focus that the users that we would like to target were in one of those satellite apps, namely the six-pack app, and did not engage with the res uh, Rantastic results app yet. Important metrics that we would like to compare, or that we wanted to compare, were, for instance, the RTP, the registration to purchase rate, and the ROIS, the return on ad spend. So what, would you, uh, what did we do? Actually, firstly, Rantastic run a benchmark campaign where they did not use the audience builder. This was a campaign using the existing adjust integration with Facebook, meaning in order to create custom audits in Facebook, we had to share all of Rantastic's six-pack uh, app installs and primary events. After that, they created them a segment within the audience builder, which was essentially a list of advertising IDs which, were then, uh, which we were then be able to upload directly to Facebook. And the audience that they created on top of the already existing criteria was that users who triggered actually an app activity, which means that they started the workout within the six pack app um, for longer than one minute, and who also had the last active session within the past 14 days. As a next step, they plug this audience into a Facebook custom audience to see if the audience builder could help them drive better results than they saw on the benchmark campaign. And as you can see here, outlining the uh, key results with the extra segmentation achieved through audience builder, Rantastic was able to target higher value users more effectively as seen with a drastic improvement of register to purchase when compared to campaign A, which was run without the audience builder. And what's more is that they saw a positive return on ad spend after just seven days compared to the benchmark campaign where it took a longer period. Finalizing up, the audience builder is still free uh, until the 30th of September. So what really would actually encourage all of you who are already with Adjust to make use of this feature and try it out, give it a try and see what you can actually find out by using this on top of your already existing campaigns if you see any improvement and what you can actually segment by in order to kind of like orchestrate your campaigns more effectively. Okay, thank you very much Fabian for the introduction. Um, yeah, as I said, my name is Christian. I'm one of the co-founders of Remerge. 
And I would like to talk a little bit through our segmentation capabilities in order to optimize um, retargeting campaigns. Um, maybe just give you a short introduction to Rematch itself. Um, it was founded in 2014 in Berlin and now after three years is, is running five offices around the globe. Um, and we, we've, we founded Rematch uh, with the idea that we want to build the first custom built platform that is uh, tailored for app retargeting from the ground up. Currently our infrastructure is designed to maximize the reach. So at the moment we are handling about 1.5 million, million bit requests on a programmatic level per second, allowing to advertisers to seamlessly retarget users across Facebook and about 350, um, 100,000 apps on a global scale. Um, in the end, we designed Rematch to be an end-to-end -end integrated platform that does not require any kind of SDK integration and purely relies on device IDs either provided by clients themselves or by third parties. To briefly uh, skim over the agenda today, I would like to start with some um, use cases that we um, saw together with, the, with our clients and utilizing the audience builder feature of Adjust, so just so some uh, real-world examples. And then we would further um, talk about uh, towards the topic of real-time optimization, meaning what can you do on top of the audience builder list to further optimize your campaigns. On the next level then, and when we talk about dynamic ads, we talk about actually about personalization of ads and then using all these capabilities and mix them together with additional information that we get from a programmatic level to further make a very precise targeting and on the late, uh, latest point, and actually, I would like to show you what is our general strategy when we start working with a client, how over the time we start to optimize the campaigns, testing more and more different creative material and further broaden the portfolio that we run for a client. So let's start with some use cases that we had together with clients in terms of using the audience builder. Um, one, one good example is, as Jonas already explained, the possibility to actually define segments in the audience builder and create groups and split these, on an, um, these, these kind of segments on an even level so that you actually have two or multiple lists that have a comparable size and contain the same kind of users. Um, what one of our common clients, Rebus, was actually doing is that they actually tested us against some competitors by using these audience builder lists. So each of the retargeting partners they wanted to evaluate actually got one of these lists and then for a runtime of about four weeks they actually monitored the performance of each of these individual partners. And um, one of the outcomes here was after basically four weeks that we both decided, hey, based on the, um, the uh, segmentation list that we shared with the different retargeting partners, Remerge was one of the, the leading re, um, retargeting partners, so actually they, they had a clear foundation on which they could um, actually base their um, decision with which partner they want to actually run. So for us it was some, some kind of a verification of the, of the traffic quality that we can offer to clients. Also it was a very good proof that we have an outstanding machine learning algorithm that actually can optimize based on the provided user list to drive optimal results for the client. Another scenario that we typically have is that um, when we start re-engaging um, working together with, with clients is that um, typically a retargeting doesn't immediately start at the beginning of an app lifecycle. So most of the clients that we are working with already have apps out there that are running for quite a while, up to a couple of months, up to a year or two or whatever. And what typically is, is important is that if we, if we target segments like we want to target purchases, um, we need to know actually which users purchased something in the past before we actually started working together. So this is another very good use case where we can use the uh, Adjust Audience Builder to extract historical data for the client. So like give us all the previous purchases, give us all the people that never purchased anything. We can then inject this information and then already do retargeting campaigns even if clients have an app already running for quite a while. The last scenario actually is um, a so-called um, uplift test. Um, so basically it allows us to, um, to check, um, let's say basically the client is holding back a control group and just give us one part of the, of the uh, audience list and that what they can actually do is that they, um, they can measure how is the control group performing from an organic perspective 
against the uh, the test group that we have been uh, provided to um, to run actually retargeting. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the real-time optimization. So far, the um, the audience builder list that we get are somehow static. I mean, um, Jonas already said that we can um, pull these kind of lists on a regular basis, but sometimes there are scenarios where you would like to, in order to optimize the campaigns, to stop immediately targeting uh, specific users. Like, for instance, you have a list uh, which is uh, related to first-term purchases, so people that never did a purchase before, and in the moment that you actually do retargeting, the conversion event might be, hey, they did their first purchase. And in order to optimize these kind of campaigns, clients want to that we instantly stop targeting these users. So what we typically do is then that we are using um, the, the real-time data that is, that is sent from a client to automatically, basically, update the segmentation in real-time. So one of the ideas is actually so that um, this has the benefit that we instantly stop targeting the users as soon as they have the final, um, the desired conversion event. And that also means that we can stop um, polluting um, the, um, uh, the user with, with additional banners that he, he might uh, start to actually ignore them and that in the end saves money for the client that we don't advertise any more people that actually already converted. Another scenario would be that we can actually, if we have in-app real-time event data, that we actually can consume the, the revenues or can collect the revenues that the user generates and use that for, for further filtering and optimization, finding the right users, finding the users that have a very high uh, revenue rate, that are purchasing on a very frequent base, and can use that to instantly actually segment users. So like somebody was a first-time purchaser and now he starts to buy on a regular base, so we can use these, we can define different segments for people that did just one purchase, that did several purchases, or that are constantly buying. And people are moving automatically between these segments by utilizing the, um, the revenue data. And also it gives our account managers um, some transparency about the, the performance of the campaigns in real time. So we not only see the people are clicking, the people are converting, we actually see how much revenue is generated so we can proactively decide on, hey, this campaign is running in a very good way, or do we need to optimize in terms of, do we need to adjust the segmentation, do we need to, uh, to adjust the bidding price and so on. So this gives us full control and actually we can then um, proactively optimize campaigns before a client comes back to us after a couple of weeks and says, hey, yes, the performance was nice, but in general, the uh, general um, return on ad spend was not as we expected. So that's why these kind of additional data is quite important for us. Another scenario that we can use with, um, with in-app event data, especially uh, related to revenues, is that we can, um, for instance, for, for, for gaming apps, where you typically buy some kind of in-game credits, we can further use these information to make a fine-grained uh, targeting criteria. So as I said, we could start with people that never did a purchase, that did at least one purchase, and then do frequent purchases. But we can then mix that with the user-specific information like, hey, this person is a regular purchaser, but he has a very high uh, balance of in-app credits at the moment. So even if it's a regular purchaser, it might not make sense to actually target this user because he is already has a very saturated uh, internal uh, credit amount. Or we can use that to actually tailor the message specifically like, hey, you are a pro gamer, you, are, you have a lot of credits, so you, you get something on top. So this is also interesting for us to actually use that for further personali personalization of, of the users and how we uh, can tailor the message for each of these users. Talking about the personalization, that actually brings us to the product that we call dynamic product ads. So that's really about um, not only um, monitoring what the users are doing from an event perspective, but really looking into the additional information that comes with each of these events. So typically, if you can imagine, for instance, uh, somebody is looking in an e-commerce app on different products, um, we get a view product event from it just but there's actually additional information that can be sent as a payload along with that event, which is, for instance, the product IDs that somebody was interested in. 
And the idea behind that is actually that we can use that information, get the details about what the user was really doing in the app, what he was really looking at, how he interacted with the app, to really create on, a, on an individual level designed and personalized creatives. Um, when we do this with clients, it's typically happening at the later stage in the life cycle when we cooperate, uh, we see an, an, a quite intensive uplift in the, in the conversion rate. So one of our clients actually came up to about 329% in the higher conversion rate compared to regular static banners. And um, we use that actually to really track what the user is doing and what they are looking for. And this is not only true for e-commerce, even though that might be the first thing that everybody has in mind, but it also works perfectly for entertainment apps. Like if you want to stream TV shows, for instance, we can actually track, hey, what TV series is the person interested in and show them, hey, there is the next episode available, for instance. Or we can also use it for games, like, hey, you are stuck at level four. Now here, take this boost to reach level five. Or we can even show creative material related to the current level the user is stuck in. So like showing tips to them how they can beat the next level and so on. In order to leverage these kind of capabilities, we don't only need the, uh, the in-app events, but there's a little bit more of technical integration necessary. So typically what we need there is some kind of a product feed, some kind of material that describes to us exactly, hey, what are the different products, what are the different games, what are the different hotels that an app offers, and then we get all the additional information like what is the, what is the picture, what is the price for that product, what is the, um, the availability of that product, what might be the delivery time if you think of, of um, food delivery apps, for instance, and all this information we need to consume, and typically that's done in a uh, um, simple product feed. The good thing with Remage is that we actually don't require a specific format, so we are uh, very flexible in how and what the feed can look like, and also we don't require that these feeds are actually hosted on our site, so it could also be hosted on the client side, and many clients already have these product feeds available, so it's for us quite easy to integrate these feeds, consume them, and then actually update these feeds in real time, so whenever a product falls out of the product catalog, we actually don't show that product anymore. Also, um, the super nice benefit is actually that um, if you have these product catalogs available and you now consider an e-commerce app, it might be that um, we have different strategies how we can target people. You can look at shopping cart abandoners, people that looked at the product but in the end didn't purchase it. So we can use it to look up for the product in the product feed and show them again the product, um, hoping that now finally we can make them an offer that they would like to buy the, uh, the product. But it's not only for, for shopping cart abandoners. We can also um, look at this from a perspective from people that just purchased the product because what we can then do is basically kind of look of, hey, what, what kind of product did he actually purchase? What kind of, let's say, what was the price category? What was the, what was the general category for that kind of product? What was, the, what was the favorite color? And then actually show uh, similar products to them. So you bought that pair of shoes here, it's a nice different pair that actually fits uh, to the one you just bought. Or another scenario would be to look at complementary products like this is a good addition to what you just recently bought. And this information can be incorporated by consuming the in-app event data plus combining it with the product feed to make recommendations. As said in the beginning, this also works, for instance, for gaming apps. So like, if we get insights into what are the different levels, is there any specific creative material for these different game levels or game stages the users in, we can also consume that information and then show tailored apps like, hey, get a boost to reach level five, or here's a nice reward if you beat the next level. And so um, that, that is offering also some value in these kind of domains. So far, we just talked about, let's say, the in-app behavior of the user. We got the audience builder list. We can mix that together with real-time in-app events to be more accurate about what the user is really interested in. But the next level is actually that we can consume more additional sources of information. Like, for instance, since we're running on, an, on a programmatic approach, we are, can actually tap into the information that we receive from the RTB exchanges, like the bid requests. So typically, what is part of these kind of bid requests is, for instance, geo-based information, like we know exactly in which country the user is. We might even know in which state or city actually resides um, 
This comes along also with latitude and longitude information, so we can really use geofencing capabilities to target a specific user group in a specific geographical area. Also, information that we get along is information about the publishing app, so what app is it where we actually are asked to actually show um, a banner so that we can, for instance, filter, hey, I don't want to wanna do advertising in, in, uh, in gaming apps, for instance. Um, and this geotargeting is actually quite interesting for some of our clients that offer typically just some regional services. So they're not interested in running on a global, let's say, American campaign because the service they offer is just available in a couple of cities, for instance. Or there are legal requirements that say, hey, we cannot do money gambling apps, for instance, in certain states in the US. So we actually can use that information to filter these users out to not target them so that we don't violate against any legal regulations. So one example, for instance, is today Tix, a client that is uh, advertising um, musical shows and they do that only in, in, for instance, in San Francisco and New York. And obviously they only want to target people that are currently residing in San Francisco or are currently in New York City and then show them on a very short notice, hey, within the next couple of days, there is still a Broadway show running in New York which might be of interest for you. So there we use these kind of capabilities to, to really focus on only specific geo-related area where the client is offering a service. Also, we can use that uh, real-time information to actually synchronize with any, any kind of Facebook retargeting campaigns. So we have a seamless integration with, with Facebook. So whatever kind of, of, of segmentation we are on our site, it could be based on the adjust audience builder list. It could be mixed in with real-time event data. It could be even mixed in with bit request geo information. We can then synchronize these, these, um, these segments that are generated automatically with Facebook so, so that we can mimic the same targeting criteria on Facebook. That's done in an automated fashion. There's no manual effort from the client related. And this synchronization is also happening in almost real time. So whenever a user falls out of a segment, we notify Facebook about, hey, there was a change. We are updating the segment information for Facebook. And then the client can rely on that this is always up to date. And just to show you how typically such, um, such a retargeting strategy with rematch evolves over the time, let's have a look. Um, how we typically approach these things. Um, what we typically do is in the beginning, because retargeting is still a, 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 a hot topic and a new topic for many of our clients, we typically start with a proof of concept phase. That's a very coarse-grained segmentation in the beginning with just, let's say, static banners and we're focusing only on, let's say, simple segments like purchases, non-purchases. And if this first simple approach actually works, um, then we start to expand our capabilities. We bring in additional information like the product feed information. We bring in the geo information or revenue information and start to also add more and more different ad formats like adding native or at a later stage bring the dynamic product ads into being or add video material which also can be incorporated with dynamic content. To just show you as a last slide an overview about how this evolves for one of our common clients, which is Food Panda. Basically, in 2014, we started with regular standard ads. Where the performance was okay, we actually started now to expand the collaboration, the integrated native ads in 2015 for Food Panda, brought in dynamic ads in 2016, and now um, launched the video feature to support video ads for Food Panda in 2017. So over the time, the portfolio grew bigger, the different channels that we're advertising became broader, and uh, in general, we have a more fine-grained segmentation with more tailored apps to the individual user. With that, I come to an end and can hand back to Fabian. Thanks so much, Christian, for all the explanations. I think you can just leave it at the last slide. That's totally fine. So we can see you guys' faces. And what I want to do now is take some of the questions that you guys um, asked during the webinar, the most relevant ones, of course, and um, yeah, ask them to the experts that we have on the line. So the first one I wanted to ask to uh, Jonas. Um, Jonas, this is uh, very specific to the audience builder that you walked us through. Um, so we showed a lot of campaigns and a lot of use cases and examples, which are more for, uh, let's say, paid acquisition or paid channels. Is it also possible to look more at uh, organic users and organic channels?
<clears throat> so yeah, that's that's totally possible. Actually, while coming up with additional conditions, um, segmenting your audience, you can select the attribution and then just filter out users who only installed organically. Meaning this gives you actually the benefit of targeting those users who are actually voluntarily in installed your app and then drive them back and let them engage with your content and your product. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, that was, I think, a yeah, very good answer. And uh, next one uh, I wanted to ask was for uh, Christian. So the next one was, um, can the segmentation only be done based on the in-app events? So we will look at a lot of in-app events. Uh, and audience lists, of course, and hashtag audience builder. Or are there any other ways to segment users in your mobile marketing? Yeah, yeah thanks for the question. Actually, um, over the last three years, we actually saw that um, a lot of clients have, um, there's, there's a vast heterogeneous landscape out there, in different ways actually how you can, how you can um, track or analyze in-app behavior. So what, what we did is basically we created a custom event API where clients can actually uh, develop their own eventing system against. So what we typically have as a scenario is that some of our clients have their own BI system developed and they are calculating specific segments uh, in their BI system and then forward these kind of information to us like they calculate if people are about to churn for instance it's something that they measure outside of the app so they're sending these kind of tailored events custom tailored events to us other clients are using tools like Empartical or the Adobe Audience Manager to actually segment users or, or hide specific information from us and then just give us these kind of uh, obscure segmentation, which we should blindly target. Um, these kind of systems are also incorporated, and we can work with those. Perfect. Thanks so much, uh, Christian. Also, like covering the, the more sophisticated use cases here. Um, one question we had uh, around uh, segmentation and uh, segments was for Jonas, and that one was uh, regarding the audience builder. How many segments? Can you actually build? Are there any best practices? I know this has just been uh, developed and launched, so there's already uh, uh, quite quite a few clients using it. But what would you say? Uh, how many segments can you build uh, with the audience? Builder? So um, there are actually basically no limitations when it comes up to the count of segments that you can build with us. Um, we have clients who use the feature quite frequently and have elaborated a huge and vast list of uh, segments um, in order to engage with the users to create a lookalike audience to retarget them. So that there's actually no limitation. Um, apart from that, what might be also interesting to notice is that um, once you start tracking with us, um, those segments that you create, since it runs on your own and just data, uh, you can look back to it indefinitely. So for example, if you start tracking with us this month and then you use the audience builder in two years from now, you would still be able to segment the users that you gained back in the day when you started tracking with us. Perfect. Um, thanks, Jonas, for this one. Um, we've sort of come up uh, to our time threshold that we had set ourselves. Uh, what I wanted to do is give uh, one last question to, to Christian and the Remerge team. Um, there have been a few other ones which we probably won't cover uh, in person, but I'll of course make sure to forward those questions to Christian and then also Jonas. So the last question for today uh, for Christian are, are there any other marketing activities that require real-time event data? Actually, um, um, Jonas mentioned that already in the beginning, one of the scenarios that you can use with the audience builder is cross-promo. And um, what we now saw recently is that um, clients were asking if you could do cross-promotions also on the real-time in-app events. So uh, for instance, they, uh, they want to migrate from one existing app to another one, and they want to do that only for people that actually had a, had a quite a um, purchase history and we're very engaged in the past. So we use the in-app event data to actually find which are the high value users based on all these different criteria I mentioned earlier and then use that for actually cross promotion to bring them to a new app or a new version of the app. So that's what we saw recently and that's also why we built in this kind of capabilities. Okay. Um, thanks so much, uh, Christian, for not only answering the questions, but taking the time to uh, walk us through the use cases that you guys selected and that are possible with uh, Remerge. 
and also very often in combination with the Jest as the measurement partner. So I also wanted to thank uh, Jonas for the time spent walking us through the audience builder, the use cases. And uh, I think what became apparent for me uh, was that obviously segmentation is a huge deal and can basically help you, and Jonas put it very well, orchestrate your mobile marketing in a way more effective way. And I think um, not spending money on users that will never purchase or never buy from you uh, because they're just not the right ones and then focusing in on the ones that actually um, have already uh, engaged or have bought in the past um, looking at retargeting campaigns I think that is that is the key here so not only acquiring new users but actually making more of the ones that you already have um, and I think we've we've been blessed with a, a huge number of use cases which I hope you guys can actually uh, try yourselves at work. So um, what we'll do, of course, as mentioned, was send you the, the slides, send you the recording as well, so you can rewatch it or share it internally if you wanted to. And uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, very happy how it went. Uh, I think we got a lot of great questions, we got a lot of great insights, and uh, we'll obviously via mail, as always, uh, send over all the materials, and then also the invitation for the next webinar, which is going to happen in uh, October. So uh, thanks guys very much. Thank you uh, Christian and the Remerge team and thank you Jonas and uh, have a great day everybody.